And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to be making a warm chicken salad, kind of a Chinese-style salad. To go along with that, we're going to make a quick vegetable pasta soup. And then for dessert, we're going to make an easy, fast, healthy-er chocolate bar. We're going to start with our chocolate bar because that has to bake the longest. Now, I've got my oven preheated to 325 degrees. Now, I have a bag of just the little muffin mixes that you get where you get the flour and the sugars and all that stuff. And it's a honey bran muffin mix. My kids love these muffins. They'd rather have this than a chocolate chip muffin. They love the honey bran muffins, but we're gonna use this as our base for our cookie bar. And that's what makes it healthier is it's got a little bit of bran in it. So just one bag of the honey bran muffin mix. To that, we're gonna add one stick or half a cup of butter that we've melted. This is one of those you could use you know, if you prefer the margarine, you could use that. That would be fine. One stick or half a cup. Then we're going to add two eggs that I'm going to beat a little bit before I put into the uh, muffin mixture. And I got a little tiny bit of a shell in there. Let's get that out. Come on, you. Now let me grab a spoon. that little bit of a shell out. We don't want that crunch, that's for sure. One piece, two pieces. Easy enough. Let's just break the yolks and kind of beat them just lightly before we add it to our muffin mixture. Just kind of give that a little bit of a head start. Then we're going to add um, a fourth of a cup of packed when you, whenever you hear the term measuring for brown sugar, it means packed in there, just lightly packed in. And this is a fourth of a cup of light brown. You could use dark brown if, if it's fine. Half a teaspoon of salt. Let's stir that together. Then we're going to add some chocolate chips. And of course, this is what makes it chocolatey. I have one cup of, I'm using semi-sweet Normally, I would use dark chocolate, but I don't have any dark chocolate chip today because I really like dark chocolate, so I'm using just semi-sweet. Any kind of chocolate you like. You could use semi-sweet, bittersweet, milk chocolate, white chocolate, any combination, dark chocolate, whatever you want. Now, this ingredient is optional. If you want to add some nuts, I love nuts, but if maybe, like my niece is allergic to nuts, so if I was making this for her, I would leave these out. This is optional. One cup. I'm using half a cup of walnuts and half a cup of almonds. You could use any kind of nut you like. You could use peanuts. You could use all walnuts, all pecans, all almonds, or any combination thereof. Whatever you like. The only nut I probably wouldn't use would be a black walnut because it has a stronger flavor. Although I love black walnut. It's a really strong flavor, and I probably wouldn't use that, but any other kind of nut would be fine. Just a small baking dish that I have sprayed with the um, cooking spray that has the flour in it, the baking cooking spray. You just want to kind of spread this out into your pan in one even little layer. This is about a, I'd say a 7 by 11 inch pan, but any, any size pan will be fine. You might have to adjust your baking times a little bit, but... I love this little pan. I use it for a lot of things. These little ceramic, you could use a glass, you could use metal, you could use whatever you want. If you were using like the metal, I probably would line it with some parchment paper just to kind of help prevent some dark browning. Sometimes metal makes it really dark. And that's it. Put it in your oven, 325 degrees 
for about 20 minutes or so. You'll be able to tell. We'll look at it in about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes, and you're going to have this most delicious little quick, easy chocolate bar that you've ever made for your family. Now, while that's baking, let me put my stuff away here. We're going to make a quick soup. I am a major soup eater. I love soups, and I love them year-round. I make soup winter, fall, summer, spring, all times of the year. I even make chili in the middle of summer. But right now, we're going to make a quick, easy, just a fast, easy vegetable soup for you and your family. It goes alongside the wonderful little chicken salad that we're going to make. And this is a great, great, great light supper any day of the week. Now, I've got a big stock pot. This is a six-quart stock pot. I'm just going to heat up a couple of tablespoons of just vegetable oil because I'm going to chop up my onion. I'm going to saute my onion just a little bit before I add anything else. And this is just one onion. This one, I believe, is a Vidalia onion, which I love. You can get any kind of onion you want, a red onion, a yellow onion, a white onion, whatever you like. This one, I do believe, is a Vidalia. You can tell by the shape. It's delicious. I love them. Just chop it up kind of, you know, medium dice. However, I believe my knife needs to be sharpened. Nothing worse than a dull knife. Get a little bench scraper out. And that should be hot. We're going to saute these. Now, we don't want to brown them. We just kind of want to soften them just a little bit in the oil. Let me turn that up just a dot. We're sweating them. We're not really browning them at all. We're just bringing out some of the natural flavors and sugars in the, in the vegetables before we add our broth. Got a couple of stalks of celery. Going to kind of just dice that up fine, just sort of split it down the middle. Of course, all this has been washed. I go ahead and cut mine in half to make it a little bit easier. Kind of a medium dice again. You want your um, pieces to be about the same. I have got myself a dull knife. There's nothing worse, so let me get a different one. Let me just sharpen that one. Add your celery to your mixture. Just kind of stir that together. This is a healthy, healthy soup to make, and you can mix up these vegetables. Maybe you're growing a garden and you've got some beautiful zucchini or squash or eggplant or whatever you grow. You could absolutely add that in here too if you wanted to. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm just going to let these saute. And when I come back, we're going to get our soup finished up and let that simmer away. And then we're going to make a delicious Chinese chicken salad that's warm. I'll be back with you in just a minute.
come back. Now our vegetables are sauteing. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt, probably about a teaspoon, and some freshly ground pepper to my vegetables that are sauteing here. Mm. I don't think anything smells better than onions and celery sauteing together. I love that smell, mm, smells so good. Then I've got just some pre-shredded up carrots. If you don't have these and you just wanna peel a carrot and dice it, you can absolutely do that. About a cup, cup and a half. These measurements are very, you know, flexible. You could do more or less, whatever you want. Then I've got one potato. Now I scrubbed this and I'm gonna leave the peel on because I really like the peel. It adds so much nutrients. And so if you like the peel on yours, and I do, you know, just a medium dice again. You don't have to peel it. If you want to, you can though, by all means. I like the earthiness that the peel adds and it does add a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals to it. I read one time that the, most of the vitamins and minerals in a potato are right under the skin. So oftentimes if you peel it, you're peeling away all the nutrition. So if you, you know, if you can tolerate the skin, some people can't. But if you can, leave it on there, it's perfectly fine. Just kind of stir all that together. Then I've got some chicken stock, a couple of cartons. This is a total of about eight cups, but I'm gonna see how much I need. Of just chicken stock, you could use a combination of chicken and beef or all, I think I'm gonna add it all or you know, all chicken, whatever you want. This is just the boxed kind. If you have homemade, absolutely use your homemade. And we're just gonna let this simmer for just a couple of minutes to kind of get that potato going. I'm gonna cover it and just sort of let it hang out there for a few minutes and then we will um, add some pasta to it. But we're gonna do that in just a minute. I am gonna go ahead and dice up, mince up a little bit of fresh parsley a couple of tablespoons of fresh parsley to put into the soup. A little freshness, a little herb, because it really doesn't have any herbage going on. Probably not a word, but I use it. This is curly leaf because my store did not have the flat leaf. That's okay, either one will work, flat leaf or curly. You know, and parsley, a lot of people think that parsley really is just for garnish, but it's not, it really adds a, a, a flavor to it, and it's not a strong flavor. It almost has a grassy flavor. And of course you can use it for garnish, and I do, but I also use it a whole lot in cooking. I guess if I had to pick a number one herb, fresh herb that I use in cooking, it would be parsley. I use a lot of thyme. I grow a little herb garden at home on my back deck. I just grow it in flower pots. I go to the nursery and get those little plants and before you know it, you have a big, huge plant of whatever herb you're growing and it's so easy to do. Just add a couple, three tablespoons of your parsley to your soup. And we're just gonna let that simmer about 10 or 15 minutes, just until the potato starts to soften and then we're gonna add some pasta to it. So let's talk about chicken salad. Now, soup and salad are just a match made in heaven, but this particular one is a warm chicken salad. I bought a rotisserie chicken. If you have leftover chicken, maybe you've had roast chicken or any kind of a chicken dish that's not really highly flavored, then you can use the leftovers from the night before. But if you don't, I love these little rotisserie chickens that you can get now in all the grocery stores. They're inexpensive, this was like $4, and it's, you know, this has been in the refrigerator overnight, so it's got a little bit of the gelatin from the chicken in there, which just really adds wonderful flavor to it. But I love the little rotisserie chickens. You can't cook this at home, most of the time, as inexpensively as you can buy them, and they're so versatile for so many things. I oftentimes will get these and just, while they're warm, you know, make maybe some mashed potatoes or roasted carrots or something to serve alongside, and that will be dinner. But today, what we're gonna do is take the meat off the bone. You want about probably a cup to a cup and a half total of the meat. It's a messy job, but that's okay. I do take the skin off of in this particular 
dish, but I use the legs and the breast meat. It's so flavorful and moist and delicious. So you want about a cup, cup and a half total of just diced up meat. We're just gonna take this off the bone. Then we're gonna warm it with some frozen vegetables, just some frozen Chinese style stir fry vegetables. They're different blends. I'll show you mine in just a second, but you can get them in the grocery store. If you don't like dark meat, by all means, you could use all white meat, but you know, the dark meat has a richer flavor. It's typically moister, but some people prefer the dark meat over the breast meat. It's whatever you like. Whatever is best for you and your family works in this dish. Do whatever you want to do. So we want to take that meat off the bone. Like I said, about a cup, cup and a half. And then we're going to get some vegetables stir frying. All right, now I got all of our chicken off the bone, and we're going to proceed on with this, but just for just a minute, let's add our pasta to our soup. Now our soup's been cooking for just a few minutes, just to kind of let that potato get a little bit started on the softening. You don't want it cooked all the way through for about five to seven minutes or so until it's just barely starting to get tender. Then we're gonna add some pasta. You can use any shape, small shape pasta that you like. Today we're gonna be using little small seashells, just the little tiny little seashells in here, but you could use the um, ditalini, you could use orzo, you could use broken pieces of spaghetti, you could use whatever you want, about a cup and a half of pasta, because pasta is really kind of the main theme in this soup. Stir that in, and then just let it simmer. I kind of leave just a little tiny gap in there, let some of the steam escape out of here. I'm gonna let that cook, takes about six minutes or so for the pasta to cook through. We've got a large skillet here that I've preheated on medium high heat. I'm gonna add a couple of teaspoons of oil. I'm using olive oil, but you can use canola or whatever you want. And then I just have a bag of just plain frozen stir fry vegetables, whatever kind you like, just a 16 ounce bag, whatever you like it will work in this recipe. This particular one has got broccoli, red pepper, some celery, green beans, sugar snap peas, water chestnuts, just different things in there. But whatever blend that you like will work. Sometimes I find this blend that's got little bits of a noodle in it. I really like those too. We're really just gonna kinda cook those through. Takes just a couple of minutes for those to just soften up. They're frozen, they're already cooked basically, they've been blanched and we just kind of want to heat them through, then we're going to add our chicken. I'm going to take a quick break, and when I come back, we're going to wrap up the chicken salad, get our bars out of the oven and finish those, and then we're going to eat. I'll be back with you in just a minute. And welcome back. Now our vegetables are just sauteing away. This is just one 16 ounce bag of frozen stir fry vegetables. Because my chicken was cold, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add my one and a half cups of diced up rotisserie chicken to my vegetables. Now, if you wanted to make this vegetarian, by all means, you could leave out the chicken and it would be fabulous but I like the chicken, so we're gonna add that in. I'm just wanting to warm the chicken through, and those vegetables truly do not take but just a minute. Let's let those go. Let's check our soup. Smelling good. Let me grab a pot holder thing here. Get that hot. Look how good. Mm. Smells wonderful. I love vegetable soup. My glasses get steamed up. All right, now, to add that crunch factor that's so big in salad, I've got one can of sliced water chestnuts. 
that I'm just going to kind of dice a little bit here. Just chop them. No method here. Just kind of chop them up into smaller bites. Go across one way and then come back the other direction. Not too fine. But I love that crunch that water chestnuts offer. Truly, they don't add a lot of flavor, but they add a crunch that just cannot be beat. And they're so very good. I'm not going to add them right yet. I'm going to kind of let that hang out for just a few minutes here. Now, I have just some salad mix, a blend, whatever kind you like. This is just a spring salad mix, but you use whatever kind of lettuce you like. You could use iceberg, romaine. You could use all rocket lettuce or arugula, which is really, really good, and I'm finding it more now in the grocery stores locally, uh, the arugula, which is kind of a peppery bite lettuce. If you like a, a bite to your food, a, a, a almost a peppery flavor, you will love arugula. And many times your spring mixes have a little bit of arugula in it. Sometimes it's called rocket and sometimes it's called arugula. You'll see it in your bags where you get your lettuce now. I'm finding it locally a whole lot now. But this is just a little spring blend of different kinds of lettuces. Our dressing is going to be just a bottled Asian salad dressing. You can find it either in the produce section, in the jars, in the chilled section, or you can get some on the uh, aisle where you buy the bottled salad dressings. Either one will work. Delicious. I love that stuff. It's so good on salad. And so I'm going to use it in the warm salad today. This is, we're just adding our water chestnuts. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. I'm not going to add salt because that dressing is a little salty because it's got soy sauce as a base. But if you like extra salt, by all means, you can add some if you want to. I just don't want to. Taste it first. I find oftentimes people automatically go to that salt shaker and their food doesn't need it. This is done. Now you could eat that right there over some rice and have yourself a meal, but we're gonna make a salad out of it. I'm gonna add our dressing to the mixture, about half a cup, third to a half a cup, depending on how much greens you've got. I've got about probably six cups of greens. Turn that off, because that's done. Mm. If you could smell this, smells fabulous. That's through. I am going to add, I'm using the jarred kind. I am going to add a little bit of dressing, if I can get it open, to my greens. I'm going to kind of dress my greens before I add that so that they have some flavor too. Let me get my tongs here. and just kind of toss that around. Now, I don't like a lot of salad dressing in my salads. I just like it to be lightly flavored. But by all means, if you want extra, add extra. It's up to you. Just a little bit of extra flavor there. And then add your chicken salad mixture that you just made right over the greens. Let's stir that up. My, this pot is heavy. Let me grab the other side here. And just add that right over top. And it kind of wilts the greens just a little bit. You could do this over baby spinach, too, if you wanted to, for that little bit of an extra flavor instead of the salad greens. Whatever you like would work. And then just toss all that together. Now, the heat from the chicken and the vegetables kind of wilt that salad just a little bit makes it absolutely scrumptiously delicious. I'm a big salad eater. I like salad of all kinds. And that, my friends, looks delicious. You could serve this with chow mein noodles. You know those crunchy noodles that you get? You could serve it with that if you wanted to. I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of sesame seeds because I love these things. I love the flavor. If you wanted to douse it with just maybe a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil, 
you could by all means, and that's done. And that's a meal in and of itself, but we have some things to go along with it. Okay, now our bars are done, and they're done when you insert a toothpick in and it comes out clean. It takes about 25 minutes or so. They need to cool for about 30 minutes before you cut them. We've got our wonderful soup here, our vegetable soup that's chocked full of just vegetables and chicken broth and pasta, which we use any, you can use any small shape that you like. We used seashell pasta today. You can mix up these veggies any way you like. Maybe you've got some zucchini or yellow squash or eggplant or whatever you like. Fennel would be delicious in there. Uh, a fennel bulb, whatever kind of vegetable that you like. But we've used celery and onions and some potato and carrots and then just sauteed that up and added our broth, some chopped fresh parsley, and then our wonderful little ch warm Chinese chicken salad that really truly is a meal in and of itself. It's delicious, straight hot, but it's also good at room temperature. If you want to just get great for like a picnic, that kind of thing, because it doesn't have any mayonnaise in it, so it's not going to spoil. So if you wanted to use that for a picnic, that would be delicious. Just a warm chicken salad, Chinese style with an Asian dressing. To top off our little chocolate bars, we want to just take some powdered sugar and go over our chocolate bars with just a little bit of powdered sugar just to make it even more decadent than it already is. Delicious, delicious little dessert. That would be really good for a breakfast bar with a cup of coffee would be delicious. I hope you'll try these recipes. Log on and get the recipes, download them, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Man. Thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna. PO Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.